about what's really going to have to happen here in these next matches as well. Who's going to be the one to step up against the big dogs? Wolves looking really good, and that'll be match four where they play Burrito to see really how good they are, especially since Burrito falling to D69 earlier. But coming up next, and actually coming up right now, it's going to be D69 versus Interlopers. We will be actually taking a look at the standings next and not going into a, a break, Nick. This is, this is fortunate Paladins esports action here. We're rolling. We had our technical difficulties earlier, but we're paying you back now. We're going to keep on rolling. No more breaks. No more bathroom breaks for rain day or pretty hair. We don't need it. In fact, we're not even human, Nick. We, we are something greater. I never need to pee. <laughs> That's so right. you see here, District 69, they need a 2-0 interlopers here uh, because Wolves have already set the president that they have what it takes uh, to 2-0 the interlopers. Yep. Um, District 69 uh, have the 2-1 right now. The That's two right. Wins, one loss to Burrito. That's right. Against uh, what, you know, albeit not the, the full starting five for Burrito, so mm -hmm. still kind of in their, their weakened state. Here are the maps, too. Uh, it looks like Serpent Beach is going to be the first selection where the game will be played. Timber Mill, banned out. Ice Mines, banned out. D69 coming off a great win. And uh, Interloper is coming off a very bad loss here. Um, I would expect this to be heavily in D69's favor, at least for today. Interlopers are going to have to bounce back big here against some of the best teams, one of the best teams that Europe has seen in the Paladin scene. Uh have, they do have the sub from District 69's HRX squad and Unbelievable there, who's been playing uh, more Barrack these days than Ruckus, for sure. And he's been playing Pip a little bit more as well, yeah. who's kind of come back into favor. We saw some have a phenomenal game on yep. him as well. But now it's 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 a full swing here in the draft. The draft, I, it's in a healthy spot right now. Yeah. I like it. Aside from Ian kind of being that first pick, everything else seems like it's pretty up in the air. District 69 have what they like to prioritize. Interlopers have what like they like to prioritize. Mm. Uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's a weird balance of trying to take something away, but also get what you're comfortable and what you prioritize. I'm sorry. I mean, my first impression of Interlopers that really wowed me, shocked me, was when they came out with the Maeve. When Maeve was released that weekend and they just played Maeve, it's such a good level and spunky really proved that he was one of the best maves and we, we didn't see another mave really i think perform at that level that spunky did we saw mm. a lot of good maves lazy eliminate very good but we just didn't see that and now they've gone completely from it i don't know nick do you think this could be the time with things not really working for them to try and bring out a an old trick well there is a lot of mave nerfs upcoming so maybe they've stopped practicing it as a result they've stopped running it that's uh, true it's tough to say uh, they do lock in the Drogos, which is a good takeaway uh, that Interlopers, they're, they're confident in running it. Uh, Burrito, they do run it, but I don't think as confidently as like, you know, District 69 obviously right. runs it. Where that's not really the case for Interlopers. This is one of their staple picks. Uh, this is a great takeaway from District 69. It's going to force some type of flank pressure, whether it be Buck, which was just locked in, might might still be in Jaroxas. They still need... Uh, their Maldamba pickup, but they're going to go with the Torvald. I like this draft. You, you know, we saw this, Nick. Interlopers and D69 picked the exact same, I think, top five every single time. We never saw Buck come out. And I think this is just showing that D69 feel confident enough to run Buck. They they feel like they want to style a little bit here. They want to win more. They don't feel like they're at an even playing field with this team. Perdo is one of the best Bucks there is. And and, and if they did, if they weren't confident enough in the exact same lineup to pick it against Burrito, they feel that they've got something over the edge of of interlopers here ruckus gonna get selected cast this is almost the exact same lineup that we actually saw um and in a burrito be playing yeah, you sub the uh sub the drogos yeah exactly bomb king. sub the drogos for the bomb king torvald now and maldamba selected again d69 trying to bring in some buck wild action Oof. and it combos it it synerg combos and synergizes so well with the torvald field oh, study yeah. legendary in particular 40% extra damage during the shield's duration. Only two seconds, only 2,000 health, but Perdo doesn't need much of a window to come out on top of a 1v1 with Buck. And even Maldamba being able to heal him up, give him that uh, Mending Spirits movement speed if he's running that. Let's take a look at the legendaries here. Unbelievable. Run and Flux Generator for Ruckus. Fortify for Barrack as of now for Spunky. Worm Jets for Skill Ganon. Lifelike for Ying. And Exaction, standard Cassie dodge roll here for creatives. Field study for Elven Paths, Torvald Maelstrom for Sheepa's Grok. Pluck for Bugsy's Makoa. Ripen Gord, so they're going for the slow and the control and the team fight is Jera oh. and Bounce House finally for Perdo. And actually a change here. I see uh, Spunky actually is now running Tinkerin for Barrack on the left-hand side. You can see he switched over that at the very last second. Enhancing the blunderbuss, Nick, making it a little stronger, making it a little bit less uh, less spread so we can guarantee some of those long-range damage shots. 
on some of these targets he thinks may just be jumping around on him and he might be right especially with elven path getting the kill onto skill ganon right away sheepa just commanding the pace of this fight with the consistent maelstrom there and grok shock pulses he's grokking out right now taking down the turrets and they are moving forward with a reason to fire they have got everyone on the back heels for interlopers and d69 despite not being an advantage yet on the point are totally dominating this fight already at 75 percent on his ultimate so tempest has been really really charged up oh! off the back of that beautiful fight there there's a nice one to drive home the kill on the skill ganon district 69 coming out swinging only allowing 39 percent on the point before they move in and show got, their dominance. I got to tell you, Bounce House Buck, one of the f more fun legendaries in the game, and the ability for him to just maneuver so efficiently here. That's getting touched a little bit. Next patch as well. Going to have some extended cooldown on these leaps, but still going to be very effective. Really just being able to jump in and jump out is the strength. Right now, he's just jumping everywhere he wants. Unlimited cooldowns here, essentially, for the man with the two charges and trying to get the headshots. Jumping up, that's going to help him do that just to narrowly find more of those pellets onto the head, and he gets spunky down as well. Perdo just on a seven streak. He's very 69. good at maneuvering his heroic leaps through the air, through he the is. maps as well. And that's one thing that kind of separates him from the rest of the Buck players. That Cauterize actually coming to wow. effect there, helping him drive that kill home. There's the 40% damage. Love the it. Buck Wild as well. 900 damage, 500 damage, 800 damage. Perdo comes through like a Mack truck in that team fight to drive yet another kill home as District 69 round the final corner looking for the conversion. Man, he's just bullying all of the members of interlopers here you cannot stop perdo on this buck and serpent beach such a great map for him there's so many corners to get around and look at that 350 on everybody who's he's who he's landing on 350 again trying to find the headshot down onto interlopers one more time the dragon looking to pursue buck but do you know if you're gonna get out of this maybe you're the one getting hunted drogos might want to watch out perdo sees you is he gonna finish you off oh not yet perdo jumping back to safety and continuing the bounce house on slot looking for the ying now gets protected by elven path who's got a lot of targets low for him as he rounds the corner nice headshot there spunky goes down able to get up onto the high ground one more shot's gonna do it paired no my god finds a double kill on an absolute tear right what now have we done? 11 streak or oh, fuck there's oh. another one as he lands through there's another one double double kill for Perdo. my god Perdo just showing us all what it really means to put together a highlight reel you thought Munistina went off Perdo just cannot be stopped here taking down airborne targets taking down ground targets and godlike for the shotgun sniper doesn't need the ult but he could use it here he just wants to keep this rolling and if he does die he will feed a lot of credits to the side of interlopers so they got to be careful here maelstrom comes out from grok perdo again looking for more headshots annihilation 15 in a row the hook comes through and d69 are just slamming on interlopers Oh boy, that was and nasty. And then he misses a shot in slow mo. Lame. Forehead. Loser. Forehead in the chat, please. Who is her? Erto <laughs> does have the cauterized three online after the first round. Damage dealt though. Still gonna go over to Sheepa, who is just the king of the shock pulse right now. Consistently landing those, getting his ultimate charged up very, very quickly, getting a lot of credits online for himself as well almost hitting that cauterized three mark i'd like if we could take a look at the net worth chart um i'd be very interested to see where perido sits on that that one key binding there pulls that up there it is 1859 so is leading despite not leading player damage is leading uh, the net worth chart. So many eliminations. I mean, he's been in that fight the entire time. He's stomping on everybody, Nick. Anybody who dies, he's got tagged. And that is the power of Bounce House as well. The damage on the jump, 350, nothing to uh, sniff at. And Interlopers know that best themselves. He actually gets uh, some very generous damage there on the Nikasi as well. And now onto the point, trying to fight the Barrack. Not invincible Whoa. though, is this Buck. He hit his head. That could be a problem. Oh, Bounce House gonna save him. Keep him alive for now. Bugsy on the point still with Makoa. Looking to find one more. Ancient Rage pops out. It's gonna clean up Ruckus. And now he's looking for his next target, Barrack. Oh boy, you just, you just, no. Not gonna stay alive after that one. Bought time, another double kill for Perido. As soon as the tanks are brought low, Perido is able to find the squishies in the back line. Now he's just looking for the zone. He's looking to dismount everybody coming out of spawn right now. We'll find Ruckus on the high ground. Nice heroic leap just to change positions while staying on the high ground. Sees the bear coming through as well. This is what I'm talking about. It's just like poetry as yeah. he weaves through the map. He knows exactly the angles he needs to take to get from high ground spot to high ground spot. Jump back up. 
knows these maps like the back of his hand. And I love the, the positioning too as well, running the extra uh, strength on leg day, pops into the ult. Oh boy, Buck Wild, two kills for Perdo. Wants to find three, that should be easy for him, but that one gets taken down, the elimination, no kill. He wants the fi finishing blow on this, but Jera picks it up as well. This Buck play out of this world. And man, they have no answer for it on the side of Interlopers with 3-0 going the score for D69. This is a dominant performance from the district right now. Come at Goomba Stomp and Spunky in the corner. Nowhere for him to run. It was a dimensional link away, but My it doesn't God, really matter as the pressure is being kept up by Shipa as well, who is pumping almost as much damage through these team fights as Perdo is as flashy as this is. We've been on him the whole time, and for good reason, will he go oh! down here? Finally, rot low the 27 streak meets its end. Spunky, <laughs> Spunky gets 100% on his ult now. So Interloper is free as it, Dome Shield ever. Exactly, get the Dome Shield. They're gonna stay because you see how much of the pacing that Perdo was able to control with that pressure. Sheba though, finding a kill, but Skill Ganon picks one up as well. They fought enough time for Perdo to get back into the fight as Buck, and he continues jumping around as Jera here in the backside gets taken down. There's the Ruckus trying to fire onto Perdo and get him out of the fight. I expect he'll just be able to move around. He's still there. You can't chase this guy, and that's one of the powers of Bounce House. Whether he's attacking you but or whether you're trying to chase him down, it's so difficult to do either. Sitting on the payload right now, Bugsy. Takes down Spunky, however, pops the Ancient Rage. A lot of ultimate shards coming through for every member of District 69. Dredge anchors the Ruckus back in, but is shut down by the Dragon Punch. Buck Wild is still here to drive this fight. Home Perdo continuing to leave, keeping everyone in their spawn. Cyberbully won't even let Interlopers come out to play. And he doesn't want to change that one bit. He's fine getting the bad rap. He knows that people are going to call him a bully, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter because his team want to get this victory. They want to get this W and hand that L to Interlopers as quickly as possible. 3-0 could be 4-0 if things don't change here. Great shot. Bugsy finishes off Spunky. Now Drogo's nowhere to run. Shotgun Sniper back at it again. Hits him in the air and then the display of grace and 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 God bless strength that bald head. and bravado, and <laughs> it was poetry. It was, it was, uh, it was theater. I would say, Perdo just jumping down. That was probably one of the more exciting and like just gratifying player cams. I think we've watched for a game. We watched him the whole ever. game. I mean, because he didn't die. I mean, he just didn't die. He kept jumping. It was just constant action. It's like, man, that was that was beautiful. What else do we want to watch? I know we're on the scoreboard scene. How much he was able to push home pair do 72,000 damage second only to Sheepa's Grok who fed pair do <laughs> that's crazy to me that he was so deep that whole time and still only one death knowing exactly Let me go. when he needs to get out 72,000 damage that's it I mean you guys saw it that was pretty much the whole game there were shock pulses you know weaving their way into the back line as well Sheepa was Holding it down, but just so much pressure kept up from Perido. Elven Path keeping him shielded as well. Anyone that managed to slip through that pressure, Bugsy was there to hook him out. And Jera, doing his thing, 59,000 damage. With this, healing. with this mobility, I mean, he truly does what a flanker should do, which is distract, right? But he doesn't have that kind of um, bug because he's naturally tanky, because he's got the self-healing, um, because Bounce House now with the charges and how, how close they are together. He, he almost doesn't have that kind of negative that a flanker has, right? Where you get in, you distract, but now once you've gotten in, if you haven't killed your target, you could be in trouble, right? Because now your mobility's down or whatever. He's he's almost in the place of an Eevee where she was when she versatile. was extremely, extremely valued in both scenes because it's he, like a wormhole where you get to go back to wherever you want. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or keep going. It's like the adventure can continue or can you can restart and try again. That's the thing. Buck just with the instant restart button with Bounce House and... Uh, making a clear statement here. And again, I don't know if Burrito would have fallen for that as well. Uh, they might have been a little bit more concise, a little bit more contained, a little bit more mature in dealing with Perdo's buck. Um, and therefore, maybe they weren't comfortable in running it. But man, how could you not bring that out every game here, uh, especially now on Jaguar Falls? It's uh, a little bit tighter, a little bit more constricted, not as much room for buck to fly around on the high ground. Yeah. While, uh, while at the same time keeping himself safe, that's kind of the uniqueness uh, to the Serpent Beach. Sure. Uh, we've seen Buck kind of excel there because it's just enough room for Buck to be able to leap from spot to spot, but it's just enough cover as well to keep him safe. Jaguar Falls is kind of more on the closed in. 
spectrum, where Androxus kind of starts to be a little bit more favorable. Yeah. Where in, uh, I heard that this guy can play a pretty good Androxus I, I, as well. I heard, but I'm not sure. I haven't seen any evidence of that. Perdo hasn't really shown that he can handle Androxus very well. I think we all know that watching, so I don't know. There's a lot he's got to prove. D69, take Ying. Um, great pick. And pretty standard here for the well meta. Done. Interlopers follow up with the Drogos. Will they keep it moving, though, with the Barrack, the Makoa, and maybe the Grok here, where they've loved taking. Makoa is going to be selected. Mm. They feel like that's the answer. They didn't like that in tandem with how much pressure the Buck could put up last game. A good pick, the Makoa Dredge Anchors. It's so good for displacement, especially on this map, where there are a lot of line of sight breaks. So the second yeah. you see someone on the back foot looking like they want to start retreating, you can dredge anchor them back in or pull them out of favorable position for a team fight at any point. Uh, it's always a valuable asset to have for your team. But District Six, it's it's hard for me to say like they should pick this tank here because District 69 can, they feel like they can play every tank so well. Yeah. And frankly, so do the interlopers. A lot of these guys have shown a lot of mastery uh, on these frontliners. Barrick, Grok, very, very cool duo right now, especially Barrick and Ying together. Interlopers take. The Androx is away, which was uh, admittedly in that last set versus Wolves. Spunky was really the highlight for them on Jaguar Falls. This map specifically with his Androxus play got about 80,000 or so damage in that game and mm. really was a highlight. Torvald now selected. So this is two tanks, two healers, D69. They could go really tanky here, Nick. I mean, the Victor would add a lot of long range damage, but again, <laughs> nope. I don't see why. Why, <laughs> why would you? That's what I'm saying, man. He just had such a great game. If it ain't broke, well, don't fix it. Uh, the reason is Shaolin is a little bit better at dealing with Buck with the Impaler Arrow can yeah. lock the Buck down for a time. And Maldamba, as he sees the Heroic Leap coming in, can start to prime the, the Snake Stun as well. Buck's yep. a pretty big target. He can be, he's, he's gonna struggle, I think. He's not gonna be as free farm as it was on Serpent Beach. It's a little bit more closed in uh, on Jaguar Falls, where Androxus, I think, is gonna have a lot more pressure. And Drogos as well, being on the side of Interlopers. I like this draft from these guys. It's a lot of damage, a lot of guys that can drive this team fight. Hope Drogos can carry a team fight, Shaolin can carry a team fight, and Droxus can carry a team fight. Very dangerous draft here from the Interlopers, but likewise for District 69, they got one that's tough to break. Bounce House for Pair Doze, Buck running Maelstrom for Sheepas Grok. They've got Bugsy running Architect Tonix for now on the Barrack. We'll have to see if he sticks with that legendary resonance yeah, right. to shatter. Yeah, right. For Jeremy. Maybe he's just going to style on him, dude. He's not. Maybe. No way. Field study for uh, Elven Pass Torvald. Desert Shadow currently for creatives, but we'll see if he sticks with that. Could be, though. Dark he's Stalker for Nether Step. He has run it. Ripened Gord for Maldamba. A little bit of extra slows there. Fuse a lot for Skill Ganon and Pluck for Unbelievable. And it looks like Jared did, I believe, switch back to Life Like there on the Ying. Just to confirm Zero that, can we can we can we just confirm that did, left yeah. side? He did, yeah, he did. he did. Okay, just to make sure. That's what I thought. No style points for you. We get back into the action here, and you see the first blood coming through. Oh boy, oh boy, the damage raining down from Skill Cannon. Spunky picks up the first kill on the Perdo, so things go sharply in a different way. But D69 still with the control over the objective, 60% and counting forward now. They basically won this fight. Unless interlopers have a prayer. <laughs> they have Perdo coming back in as well. Pops the recovery. Shaolin planted on the point. Perdo just keeping everyone busy. Oh. There's the lockdown we're talking about, though. That is what Perdo is going to have to deal with more often than yes. not in this game. And of course, the planet, too. If planet was available, that would have been a dead Perdo. And that is why you see he's going to have to pick his moments a little bit more. It's not going to be so free. But still, Perdo being that pseudo frontline. And that's what I really like about this. You got the bear, you got the Torvald, but you also got. Oh my god! Sheba! Ping pong. Ping pong. I thought we were playing Paladin. It's not ping pong, buddy. Look at this. Grok going in with the shock pulse bounces. Maelstrom. Oh boy, these uh, these interlopers, I would now say, are time. thunderstruck. <laughs> it's time for Cyberbully Sheepa, not letting anyone come out to play. <laughs> Jaguar Falls, you know, the closer it is, the, the Shock Pulse is going to do more and more damage, be able to bounce to more and more targets. And Makoa just trying to lock down somebody right now. We'll lock down Sheepa, but. What does it really get done? The healing totem is still down. This Sheepa is still very healthy. Cauterized ones are all that that interlopers have to deal with this right now, and it's just not enough. There it is, the Ghost Walk. Will this be enough? Gets to a Ying clone. He can't go into his ultimate because he'll be too vulnerable. Needs the in. damage. And they get the kill, and this could be a 2-0. Man, one of the faster 2-0s we've seen here on Jaguar Falls. Things look to be considerably similar, I would say, in terms of this point fight and the push and the last several points as well. D69 proving they are right now just in another league.
over interlopers. When you, when you see a Maldamba going all in on a kill for a Grok, you know it's it's desperation uh, for interlopers. And didn't end up getting the kill. Uh, didn't end up saving the round as well. The conversion goes through for District 69. You can see the Cauterized 2s coming through for those guys. So a lot of this healing is going to be shut down from Spunky. He's going to have a very tough time keeping his team alive. Uh, just because everyone who has it on District 69 is so effective at applying it. Cheapest beam. Uh, you can literally just spray that around a team fight just for the coverage, even if you're not interested in going for the kills. Perdo, the range on the shotgun is going to be very good. The targets that he's going to be on are going to be already in need of that healing in the back line. Very clutch shield as well coming through. Dread Serpent doesn't get much out of there. In fact, creative standing still for plan. It's going to be the perfect uh, humanoid totem for Grok to land his shock pulse off and start affecting the team. And Jaguar Falls, we talk about this a lot, you know, it's a great closed-in map, and we say, oh, Buck's going to suffer here. Uh, this champion's going to do okay here. Grok is fantastic here because of the close proximity. You just can't stand far enough away from your teammates. As he does. <laughs> As he dies. Cast, but he, the, cur cast a curse. Yeah, that's true. He's going to... He was out there. He probably wasn't planning on coming back alive from that anyway. He was super, super overextended, just looking for the zone, just looking to dismount everyone. And we could switch to, to Jarrah's cam, and he would be under absolutely no pressure right now and just capture the point for free. 3-0, District 69 go up. That's the type of, of zone. These guys aren't afraid to trade their life for the better of the team. They aren't afraid to overextend. They're not afraid to put it all on the line just to buy a few more seconds, put themselves in a little bit better of a spot. Perdo gets two there. Resilience coming through from Melvin Path as well. Doesn't want the stun, doesn't want the Dread Serpent, doesn't want any potential knockbacks, doesn't want the Impaler stun. Coming out from Sha Lin. It's not gonna affect the Makoa hook. A lot of people not sure whether that interaction takes place. Does not affect the hook from Makoa. And uh, it does though keep him very, very safe in these big clutch team fight moments where he wants to get his hyper beam off and change the tide of battle. Of course, not CC immune, unlike Makoa, who that CC immunity clearly doesn't matter. The bounce is delayed, so he gets the 350 damage. Could be the difference in killing Drogos, but hunts down the Sha Lin, but Sha Lin looks to hunt him back. Creatives getting a kill on the buck finally for falling down. Sheepa here getting the taste of a full-blooded planet, but the shield from Tor Torvald and the pressure here from Spunky is going to do enough to just stay D69 for now, but they're still knocking on the door. Enough damage from the accursed arm. It just feels like there's always more in the tank for District 69. Oh Elvapath falling low. Elva <laughs> Doe's already back. He got him! Keeps him safe. Sheepa pops the Tempest to try and keep his boys alive, but they will both fall and finally finding a stabilization play. The interlopers take some defensive positionings around their base. They have a minute to stave off the onslaught from District 69. I think we saw a really good example there of why Shaolin is a great counter to Buck. Right, Perdo just jumps in, just gets exploded by the planet. Yep, they're starting to figure that out. And, you know, you see Creative's having a lot of trouble in just hitting a Buck, but he's got to make sure he keeps those cooldowns alive uh, for when Buck does eventually decide to leap onto him. And Perdo needs to make sure that he uses Planet before he jumps in onto the Shaolin. But look at that. Ooh. Activates Buck. Wow, gets taken down. This is why Bu uh, Bugsy may run, or other Barrack players may run Tinkerin to finish off those shots and get a little bit more damage on the long-range targets. But he actually wasn't able to clean it up. His teammate, Elvin Path, was. Hyper Beam has the potential potential used to be available, but they don't even need it. D69, really a class above here, and takes the win 4-0, takes the set 2-0. Did you guys see how Bugsy was hiding behind that Yin clone there at the end? Yeah. Man, he didn't have any cooldowns. It's just the, the little things. These are the little things that you guys at home can start doing. That's the easy thing to do. Those are, these little things are what sets the team apart. Bugsy doesn't have any cooldowns. Doesn't have anywhere to go. He just goes hides behind the Yin clone. Just starts, you know, bobbing and weaving behind there. Just trying to stay safe. Those... I just love seeing those little things. Yeah, yeah. that no. get me going. Yeah, exactly. Me, me too, man. I just, I, I think about Yang clones all the time. See the store scoreboard here, and uh, Yang, she was somebody that unfortunately they didn't think about enough. Only one death. Jera stays alive way too much, and 52,000 healing. Babe, maybe not the biggest difference. Maldamba only 20,000 behind, yeah. but and, and makes up with it, a lot of it for having 10,000 more. But uh, there's that weird microculture that is District 69 going on right now where there's two of them, you know, 300 yards away zoning out in front of spawn and then Jarrah's just sitting on the point yeah. with Bugsy just like, what's up? <laughs> what's going on? Yeah. Sheba, though, impressive healing numbers, Nick. 1,237. In fact, if that was 1,234, his healing would have been 1, 2, 3, 4. That would have been another Illuminati That would have been sign. pretty cool. That would have been Illuminati, dude. Are we missing anything weird from District 69? They like tie and shielding or objective tie? Oh, my God, dude. 
Uh, they Bugs tied in. <laughs> Perdo and Elm Bat both died four no. times. Kamaker, unbelievable creatives. Oh, that's an eight. I thought that was six six. We got six six seven. Shout outs to Weekend. We have we have vision in your uh, healthcare, right? For I think so. Okay. Yeah, just just double check. I got excited. The Illuminati. So we're gonna we're going to actually uh, come back and let you see our little beautiful faces here as we talk about you know what's coming up next, and it's gonna be a big long. Uh, just kidding, not break. We're not going on a break. We're actually moving on. Aren't you we're happy? Rolling. We're rolling. We're still not using the restroom. We're excited for you. We just want to bring a little yep, bit more Paladins right East. Into the we next just want set. to bring a little bit more Paladins Pal Esports into your life, and uh, we're, we're really excited about it. And, we don't have to pee. And you know what You know what we do have to do, though? Tell them about first win of the day. Got to go get your first wins of the day. You got to get They it. don't have a chance to. We're not going on break, but that's right. after the no broadcast, breaks. go get your first wins of the days in live. Get him for all of three wins, getting all those Radiant Chests, beautiful stuff that is available to you. That's right. We're going into the standings now to see where everybody levels out. And, of course, everyone's having the worst end of the day. And sometimes it's not necessarily just that they're they're under, you know, the quality of these teams. It's just maybe they just didn't have a good day. And it reflects in both of their games here. And so they, they fall 0-4 and four, uh, after... You know, kind of winning one of the weekends of the open bracket qualifiers. Very surprising here. Wolves Esports 2 owing, two owing them. Burrito Esports actually uh, following along, losing to D69, who are the big winners of the day. 4-1.